Is there any plant, the only thing I can think of is maybe cotton has a stronger relationship with slavery than chocolate. But I can't think of anything else sugar. that maybe sugar, sugar is, would be uh, yeah a strong one. And in fact, very related because because the Jamaicans were the Caribbean was was producing the sugar cane. The cocoa was coming from Central and, and Mex Mexico and Central and South America, um, all being mixed up in the you know the kitchens of Europe and the in the chocolate factories. But basically, um, sugar is a hugely slave-based industry. Uh, in all continents, and so because slavery was the cocoa, as soon as the conquistadors and the Europeans discovered this cocoa thing, and it took off as a you know as a delight of Europe, um, then they needed vast supplies of cocoa beans from Central and South America and Mexico, um, and they they just converted all of the peasants, all the farmers there to their slaves, of course, and. Uh, or, or they, they would pay them nominal amounts of, 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 of money um, in order to get the beans, but mostly it was slave labor, and hundreds of thousands, if not millions of them died of diseases and overwork and war. And they also, the Europeans, managed to destroy the cocoa crop because of their bad farming practices. Eventually they figured out, they, they started bringing slave labor from Africa because they're already bringing hundreds of thousands, millions of slaves from Africa to grow in, to work in the sugar and the cotton plantations. So they said, well, it works for, for, for uh, cocoa and coffee as well. And so slaves are coming from Africa until the trees were completely destroyed. They decided, well, why bring coals to Newcastle? Let's just take the, the, the trees back and grow them in Africa because they grow in, in equatorial regions. We'll grow the trees and we don't have to transport all these slaves. We'll just We'll just, you know, take them right where we find them and put them to work. And again, another uh, couple of centuries of enslaving Africans to cook, to uh, pick the beans, leading up to the present day, which is what, what I discovered was when some NGOs and um, and um, people working for the United Nations brought to my attention reports that had, were terrifying. You know, the aid industry, which is the discovery that once again slavery was the uh, was an ingredient of our chocolate. I understood slavery in the past, but I thought all that was done, and then you went to uh, Ivory Coast and and found it was alive and well, and, and it even had a nice new name, too. And this is, the, the, it always gets a nice new name, doesn't it? I mean, they, they love to, to change the name. In fact, this is what, that slavery continued as coolie labor for a long time. In fact, a lot of cocoa was picked by coolies. And that's what the Hershey, uh, Milton Hershey, the great chocolate bar baron of the 19th century, his coolies in Jamaica and Cuba were picking his beans. Uh, uh, Cadbury was used getting beans from slave islands in Portugal, even though the Cadburys were abolitionists. They were, they, were, they were the chiefs, the major movers and shakers of the anti-slavery movement of the United Kingdom. Uh, they put the huge amounts of money into the campaign to fight uh, King Leopold in Congo. And yet it was finally discovered by an investigative journalist at the time named Nevinson that uh, the source of the cocoa beans of the United Kingdom uh, was slave islands off the coast of, uh, of, of equatorial Africa run by the Portuguese. He did an investigation. The Quakers said, nonsense. Or, or the Cadburys, who were Quakers, said, nonsense. We, we're Quakers. We're good people. We don't have slaves. But in fact, they, it took them 10 years before they finally admitted that they Yes, we did have a slave problem, uh, and at the, by that point they had dragged their feet long enough to find another source of beans that wasn't on these islands. But uh, that, and they, and even at that point, it was called conscripted labor. And quite now, in the present day, the the chocolate companies, the big chocolate, when I was interviewing them or trying to interview them about the lab the labor practices of cocoa farms in the Ivory Coast, they would, would were just appalled that I would suggest that this was these were slaves. No, these are not slaves. You know, these children are being paid, you know, well, you know, not the kids I met. I was very surprised the degree to which Big Chocolate um, tries to deny and to cover up what's going on. They, they don't want to confront this. And it's surprising considering that the vast majority of people who would love chocolate and eat chocolate are children. I mean, it's central to a child's life. It's birthday parties, chocolate cakes, it's chocolate ice cream, it's, it's Halloween candy, it's Christmas candy, Christmas cookies, it's uh, Easter eggs, it's Valentine's, you know, it's everything is associated. All of our great celebrations of life are associated with chocolate. You'd think it would be a priority to make sure that was clean. But uh, I, it's just hard to shame these people. With these children who are slaving away, picking this cocoa, 
conscripted labor. Don't forget, not slaves, conscripted labor. Uh, they, about two, or, two and a half to three days of their work is required for a chocolate bar. Two or three days of labor of their lives is consumed in a heartbeat on the other side of the world. And uh, I said to the boys, you know, they, they didn't know nothing about this. And I said, well, you know, the children who are eating these chocolate bars know nothing about you or, or, any, or where the beans come from. Nobody knows where the beans come from. And they thought that was amazing, that, that they didn't know what, what we did with the beans, but the people who ate the chocolate didn't know where the beans were coming from. So I made an agreement with them. I said, I'll go and I'll tell the story of where these beans come from. And they thought that was a really good idea. The book is Bitter Chocolate, Investigating the Dark Side of the World's Most Seductive Sweet. I'm speaking with the author Carol Off and Bitter Chocolate, published by Random House of Canada.